What's going on traders? Sandra O'Connell here with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It is March 8th, 2022. Today we're going to dive into the price action in the market and we'll talk about the trades that I did for today. Before we do that, quick risk disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan and your own risk parameters. Last but certainly not least, do not YOLO your entire account to any one of my trades or anyone's trades for that matter. So the theme for today is peak frustration because there was some wild action today. Let's go through these box scores and then we'll take a look at the S&P 500. So for now, SPY finished down 0.76%. We have the NASDAQ QQQ finishing down 0.46%. We have the IWM small caps actually finish out positive up 0.55%. We have the Dow Jones finish down 0.59%. And we have the ARK Innovation ETF actually finish up 0.98%. So when you look at this, it's like, hey, much less volatility compared to yesterday. Yesterday was like a negative 3 to 4% day for all of these indices. And today, hey, we had two of the five indices finish positive. And although the VIX is at, you know, about a 35 handle, you know, even the indices that finished negative really did not finish all that negative in the grand scheme. Volatility also closed lower for all of these indices here. And you can see the market breadth was mixed and the small caps actually had positive breadth and the small caps, you can see there's much more names in that small cap index. So just looking at these box scores at a surface level, it's a very mixed bag. There's ways of looking at this glass half full, ways of looking at this glass half empty. I would say the major glass half empty here is that pretty much everything closed at the bottom end of the daily range. And that is a big negative. Um, but yeah, I think we're gonna have to see what happens tomorrow. Yeah, we had some wild intraday swings. Let's take a look at these swings here. So look at this, S&P 500 futures. They're actually down now 1.12%. So they kept falling after the close. And one of the levels that I was watching very closely today was 4186.25, which corresponds with the yearly point of control. And that's the highest price that was traded or the, the highest volume price that was traded. So 4186, that was a very popular level last year. So now with where we closed, the majority of market participants that purchased stocks in 2021 are now underwater. So that is definitely a big technical no-no. And, you know, it's very likely that investors start to panic as they go, oh my gosh, everything that I bought in 2021 is now underwater. You could certainly see some follow through. And that would bring us to our yearly value very low of 40.55 spot 2.5. But let's zoom back down. Let's go to the daily chart. And you can see this has been one, two, three, four days in a row. And these sell-offs, you know, these relentless sell-offs throughout this bearish sequence in the beginning of 2022, they've been very taxing because they're essentially like relentless. Like for the most part in the bull sequence of 2020 and 2021, dips only lasted a day or two. Sometimes it would be a very scary day where the market would drop three or four uh, percent, but they were never as drawn out as what we're seeing now. And it really just goes to show there's a lot of institutions that are just scared and they're getting out of the market. So this is day four of selling. And there's definitely like some fatigue out there. If you're waiting for the selling to abate, you're like, oh my gosh, is it going to be day three? Is it going to be day four? Now tomorrow we're heading into day five. And I think it's all the more reason when the market's getting this oversold, because it is very oversold on this daily chart. If you're just trying to be patient and you're like, hey, let me look for a reversal in the market. If we're not getting that reversal, it certainly helps to just walk away from the screen for a little bit and really just regain your mental capital. But let's look at this hourly chart. So what happened this morning? We we were very weak yesterday into the close. Yesterday was our big negative 3% and change day. At 3 a.m., we got a nice bounce in the market right around the London Open. And for the U.S. Open at around 9.30, the real question was like, hey, are we going to fade this entire bounce or what? What's going to happen here? And look at this. The market was like chopping around. It was kind of weak, then kind of strong. 
We got two big headlines today. The first one is that uh, the United States is banning imports of oil from Russia. So we finally ripped the bandaid off. Hey, you know, we've been hinting at this, but here it is. It's finally out in the open. I've been mentioning the past few days that we're getting all bad news here. Nothing good is coming out. If the pattern holds, tomorrow there's going to be another bombshell headline. And then the next day there will be another one, and the next day there will be another one. That's really just the pattern of events we've had. But regardless, today we had the Russia headline, and then we had another big one. This one I thought could be huge, and it was that the Chinese government actually hacked. I believe it was like, uh, or maybe not the Chinese government, but Chinese hackers hacked uh, six United States uh, state governments. So that's another just big geopolitical move. It's a big source of potential geopolitical tension. We already have these tensions with Russia. Things are already heating up. So the last thing that we needed was this news to drop. Overall, throughout the beginning of the session, the market took it in stride. We had some dips down to about negative 1%, just shy of that. And then look at this, around lunchtime, we got this really big green candle. And I actually went to lunch, I stopped at the DMV and grabbed some lunch. And I checked my phone at one point, and I was like, oh my gosh, okay, market's up. And before I left, I was seeing some positive divergences. One of them was you know, small caps were trading positive. The ARK Innovation ETF was positive. I saw crypto was positive. I saw breadth was looking pretty good. So I was like, hey, I think there could be a local bottom here. So I actually posted a short video before uh, I left for Pristine Capital members and I actually purchased some spy calls as well. And so I'm at the DMV, I look at my phone and I go, oh wow, so the market actually did move to the upside, that's great. And I was like, okay, cool. So I, I get home and I'm like, okay, let me see if I should like take a target on these calls. And by the time I got home, the market had given back most of the gains. So I took these, I got long the March 18th, 418 calls for 960. And I said, this day has all the makings of a local bottom thus far because of those di positive divergences that I mentioned. But this was extremely odd. I would say in the past like year or so, this kind of sequence has almost never happened where we had a huge sell-off, relentless, relentless selling. The market is in an oversold condition. Let me get some bad news, what have you. Finally, the market has the turn and you flip from red to green. All of those shorts that had poor locations probably got squeezed and you go, okay, this was the turn in the market. There we go. Now we can see where we go for this up sequence. This one really got nowhere. We only had one hour of bullish price action. And then by the time one o'clock rolled around, we gave back almost all of those gains. And look at this, we ended up closing on the lows. And here we are, we're back essentially to the overnight lows. See, yeah, the market, you know, it's pretty obvious to everyone. The S&P 500 is very technically weak right now. And look at this on the five minute chart. We made it basically all the way up above this daily value where we overshot it and then just whoosh, zoomed back down over the course of an hour. So yeah, the market is very technically weak. Um, that trend model is at a negative three. And for right now, is the market oversold? It absolutely is, but we're just not getting that bounce. One other thing that you can put in like the glass half full camp is the VIX actually closed negative today. Closed down 3.62%, which is good. And you know the VIX is still at 35 though. And the VIX futures curve is inverted. And those are signs of panic in the market. So we're still in this panicked sell-off state in the market. Let me just go to the weekly chart of the VIX. Yeah, look at this. So this is quite different from these other VIX spikes. So this was the coronavirus crash. And you know, we did end up getting like a spike and then just follow through for several weeks before peaking. Look at every other time we had a VIX spike. Big green candle for one week, then immediately falling back the next week. Big green candle, falling back the following week. Green candle, 
falling back the following week. And you'll notice that pattern just continues to occur throughout 2020 and 2021. What we're seeing now is quite different. Like, look at this. We got the big green candle. Then we got a follow on in Q4 of 2021. Then, of course, we got the VIX crush. And it seemed like, oh, that was scary, but we're all good. And only a couple of weeks before the next big spike. And this one, look how much this one is lingering. We're getting red candles in the VIX on the weekly chart, but we're just making higher highs as we go. So yeah, this is like a trending high volatility market. So this is like a steamroller. Well, let's take a look. That's the VIX. Let's go to these other indices because it wasn't all bad out there. So we had that. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ finished out down 0.99%. There's a VPOC down here at 12 spot, 8,000 and change. Is this one likely to be taken out in light of today's price action, how we couldn't hold the rally? That certainly makes sense that we might end up taking that level out. Let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Russell 2000, this one ended up putting in the positive finish up 0.55%. But look at this, we're still trading below this monthly value rate low. We did rally into it intraday when the market was very strong, but we just couldn't close inside value. And then we have our Dow Jones. This one also looks very similar how we're just putting in this H pattern, cannot manage a bounce, and we are on the verge of retesting the lows from February 24th. Let's take a look here at our crude oil. So it's been a big focal point for the market and crude just continues its parabolic run it's up 4.4 uh 4.52 percent it's kind of interesting like crude is basically behaving like inverse to the s p 500 and it probably is because you know a lot of the weakness in the market right now is being caused by this oil shock but it's like a tale of two completely opposite charts one is like a parabola to the upside the other is the parabola to the downside uh, let's take a look here. Let's pull up our uh, sectors and see what happened there. So we'll look at our heat map first. So heat map, there were some bright spots. Look at this. Some of the travel names started to balance today. We had Tesla finishing positive, Facebook, Google. Some of these semiconductor stocks also finished positive. So it wasn't all bad out there. It wasn't like it was a complete washout. We did start to see some turns in the market. But look at these healthcare names. Everyone's been looking to as safe havens. These really just got taken to the woodshed. So it's really just like anything that anyone owned for any reason, whether it's speculative or now the stocks that they went into as they were selling off the speculative stocks. Now these are flipping red also. Look at our sector map. Again, this doesn't look all bad. We have gold miners, we have energy. And we have solar energy ripping out to the top of our list here. Solar stocks were up 9.32%. So that was a nice big winner. Let's pull up the chart for the TAN ETF. And this has definitely been a diamond in the rough. TAN is up 9.32%. This one is definitely putting in a trend reversal. This was one of the names on our weekend watch list for pristine capital members. Look at this good candle on high volume. So, yeah, solar stocks definitely catching some bids. And look at this. What else? Of course, the energy, the gold miners, but there were some other groups as well. So, like semiconductors are up almost 2%. Blockchain assets were up. SPAC ETF was up. Uh, Retail is up 2.23%. European financials. So, yeah, it wasn't all bad. What were some of the big losers? We had. Medical devices got crushed down 3.16%. Consumer staples got crushed. Healthcare got crushed. So a lot of these safe haven areas uh, really got sold off today. Style factors, look at this. Cyclicals finished positive. High beta finished positive. And then these international momentum, and international value also finished positive. So if we're comparing the action from today to the action from yesterday yesterday was like a, a complete washout today certainly wasn't there were some bright spots but what i think made today a little bit more challenging 
was just the fact that it really looked like we were getting some relief on the overall index level then that relief really did not come here we are now we're down 1.2 percent in the after hours so yeah i think if you're waiting for a market turn if you open up and the market's down let's say like 0.2 percent 0.4 percent whatever it is if you're just trying to wait it's almost like watching paint dry you don't want to do that if you're really waiting for something go ahead and set an alert but if you're like it's down 0.4 percent now it's down 0.44. Now it's down 0.39. Now it's down 0.29. Oh, now it's down 0.5 again. Like that's where you really are gonna lose your mental capital. So yeah, definitely just set alerts for where uh, you're looking for the market to turn. And that's really all we can do. You know, we can't control what the market is doing. We can only control what we do. All right, let's take a quick look. I'm gonna pull up our options order flow here. And let's see what we had today. Another thing that's noteworthy is the put buying has fallen off a little bit over the past couple days. So the market remains weak. But the put buyers are not coming out in full force. Let's see, uh, SPY ETF, a lot of put buyers out there. And they're all picking up short-term puts. These are for March 9th. Let's see what else we got. QQQ. Uh oh. All right, here we go. QQQ, same thing for March. A lot of puts going up. So yeah, there are definitely some investors that are having a little bit of a panic right now. Let's take a look at a few more before we break for today. Let's see, Apple. Apple had their event today. And yeah, Apple, pretty lackluster reaction to the event. Actually closed a little bit down for the session. Yeah, the market ended up finishing down as well. Mixed bag for Apple. And then let's look at, let's look at Vail. Wow, look at this. 10 strikes going out for 2024. We got the 15 strikes. Vail is a name that I traded maybe like a couple of weeks ago. Got a nice, maybe like 10% winner in this one. But this one really just kept moving to the upside this one was brought to my attention by one of our members look at this veil is looking very strong it's a brazilian name and it is broken its downtrend and now it is trending to the upside it's approaching the prior all-time highs now it's pretty crazy stuff yeah that is our options order flow for today in summary you know today was a very mixed bag we did break some key technical levels in the market and we continue to get bad news. So yeah, I think this market really just needs like some shot of good news. We have the inflation data that's coming out on this Thursday. So again, that's likely going to lead to a relief balance or just a complete plunge into the abyss. Um, so I don't really know how much there's gonna be to do tomorrow, uh, given that everyone's really just gonna be angling and positioning into that inflation data. But as always, make sure you're staying patient out there. Make sure you're preserving the mental capital. If you feel like your mental capital is dwindling, it's always a good thing to stretch the legs, take a walk and get up from the desk, especially when you don't really have anything to trade at the moment. That being said, that does it for this market recap video. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your night and I'll see you all tomorrow.